question here is about what about real life results? Do you know anyone who's had good results through having a supplement in their diet? I do. I can't talk about them individually because that would be breaking confidentiality. Um, but yes, um, I do. I've, I've um, suggested various supplements to people. So vitamin D, um, this actually, this is a fascinating um, supplement, call it a tablet, medication, whatever you want, but it does appear to affect mental health. It does appear to affect inflammation and therefore pain. And it also affects muscle strength and bone strength. So I've had a lot of people who said, when you sorted that, I actually got better in all sorts of different ways. Mm. Um, and that's taught me stuff because it ain't always in the books. <laughs> <laughs> Often my patients teach me more than my tutors taught me. Yes. But hopefully that's because I've learned to listen. And I don't always get it right. Um, mm -hmm. and, you know, I regret the times that I don't listen as much as I wish. Mm -hmm. But that's the crucial bit it is listening to the patient because normally they'll tell you what the, the, the answer is without them realizing. And it's your expertise that should be able to allow you to tease these things out. Mm -hmm. GoPro, um, yes, I've had various patients who've found it well toler tolerated um, and effective um does it stop you needing a joint replacement um in some cases it's delayed it i don't think it's ever stopped it um mm -hmm. but it, it's certainly been very beneficial and um a lot of people swear by it um who, who've tried it i've had one or two though who said no it's not right for me mm -hmm. um and i would be worried actually if i didn't have people coming back and saying whatever I'm prescribing to them or suggesting to them is, is always right and, and not saying actually sometimes it doesn't work because mm. then I would only be getting part of the information. Um, mm. So ginger, um, lots of people take ginger in different ways and swear by it. Um, I think, again, it, it's exactly the same uh, as all these other ones we're talking about. Cod liver oil less so people would take it but my impression was that they didn't benefit from it as much mm. you can get a tangible answer mm. um but this is me this is not a structured survey um but when you listen about the evidence about omega th uh, three or oils then that that does seem to be different to the the cod liver oil sort of so that that sort of fits with the evidence that you then read um and chondroitin and uh, glucosamine well they're really difficult ones and I think I would still go back to what I said in the last 10 years to to patients the evidence for a thousand people or a hundred thousand people is at best debatable um probably negative but if it works for you it seems to really work yeah um so if you want to try it go for it and that is my standard answer with patients if you want to try it if I can help you and support you I will and it doesn't matter what it is mm. provided it's safe um yeah. and, and tolerable and, and those are the key bits fantastic we have one question I think we've just got time to finish off on this I, I probably I might be able to answer this one um about a, a, a woman with cancer and osteoporosis wants to maintain flexibility and a good balance. Uh, the joints, especially knees and hips are painful, um, can manage standing Pilates, but can't do yoga and get and can't get out to walk very much. That's very um, typical of many, many people that come to our classes. What we do as well is uh, all the exercises, flexibility, aerobics, balance and strength can be done seated or standing. And sometimes we need to just be able to sit to exercise, work with those bands, build up the, the muscle again, because it's so quickly deconditioned and especially, you know, if someone hasn't been able to following cancer, for example, we don't do any forward uh, flexion in terms of severe and unsupported or sudden twisting or high impact. So that oste for osteoporosis, we make sure it's safe for, for that as well. But the best thing is to get some personal advice and maybe come and give a, a class a try. 
And yeah, I mean, I, I really hope that this lady um, gets better and, and very quickly is first thing. Um, the second is don't forget about when you're in such um, situations that there are specialist nurses with the oncology nurses are often excellent. The Macmillan nurses, excellent. Um, and they are great resources, not just for you, but also for your family. Um, and your carer may also be struggling with arthritis or back pain and being more stressed then the muscles feel tighter and you get more pain so remember that they're there for the whole family mm -hmm. um, whilst we're talking about cancer the other hot topic that we see in the newspapers and even with the nhs are um and i know there's been a couple of questions maybe along this line so what about um cannabinoids and similar uh, medications um, or supplements. Well, CBD doesn't work on uh, pain or for arth joint pain that we're aware of, um, and it doesn't have anti-inflammatory effects. THC may do, but way more trials are required. Um, and really, when we're looking at that endocannabinoid pathway, not just for CBD products, but for other ones as well, um, we really, this is, this is the exciting thing in the next 10, 20 years, um, but we're talking about that length of time and one small trial is not enough. And one of the interesting things with all the other supplements we've just been talking about, rose hips, ginger, um, et cetera, um, is that actually we're talking about multiple trials. So even for chondroitin and such like, we're able to have this discussion saying, well, we're not just looking at one trial and we're not just looking at lab trials, although we may be saying we're hypothesizing from some of the lab trials and we could do with more clinical trials to see whether those effects really translate into, into human population. But we're able to have a discussion because there's a number of trials, however small, but we're talking about small, well-run trials. Um, so this is why sometimes with supplements, you will find that doctors and pharmacists say, I'm not, I'm not able to talk about that. Yeah. Um, and other times, NICE might say, well, we're not, we're not happy with that. But a doctor may say, yeah, but that's for the population. Here is this. Um, or NICE haven't talked about that, um, that mm -hmm. supplement. So they haven't talked about ginger. They haven't talked about rosehip. They've uh, talked very briefly about chondroitin and uh, uh, and such like but you know why haven't they well it depends on what they're looking at yeah. so it's difficult um the subject make sure you go and talk to your pharmacist and your gp um don't just rely on social media um yeah. it, that can be quite dangerous Absolutely great advice. And of course, we would love uh, to carry on with this conversation, but time's run out. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Alistair Dixon, for your time. It's been fascinating talking to you, really interesting and informative. I'm sure everybody's learnt a lot from listening to you. And hopefully we can keep everybody moving, uh, as what we call move it or lose it, so they can enjoy healthier, happier lives. Absolutely. Well, thank you very much for inviting me on. You know, the, the WHO, the World Health Organization, had Move It uh, campaign about 20 years ago. Um, and it's great to see that um, you're taking the, the mantle on. Thank you. Thanks very much. Cheers. Bye, Bye for now.